Hey guys, it's Jerry. Today I'm going to talk about JLPT. As a Japanese person, I am a Japanese person, I am a native Japanese speaker, and this is the first time I tried in one level. This is the highest level of JLPT, Japanese proficiency something something test. I don't know what that stands for, but I'm just going to put it right here. And so basically, JLPD is a Japanese proficiency test for foreigners. So if you're Japanese, native Japanese speaker, you cannot take this test. The grade starts from N5 and it goes up to N1. So before we get into how to study for N1 level of JLPT, I want to briefly introduce which level you should aim for if you are looking to move to Japan to work and to live. Basically, you have to get a at least N2 level if you want to work outside of English teaching industry. If you have lower than N3, and probably the first job you would get in Japan will be an English teacher. Not that I'm saying that that's a bad job, but if you want to work in a Japanese society, then you want to aim for at least N2. Of course, you can show how well Japanese you can speak at the interview, but Japanese people like certificates. For example, we have an English proficiency test called Aiken, and uh, we also love TOEIC, we love TOEFL, Kanji test, and we have math test. And the Japanese people love to put those certificates onto their resume, so everything goes smoother if you have one of these. Okay? And I'm not going to say you should get N1 because as I tried, it's very, very difficult. I didn't think it would be this difficult, but it is difficult. Um, so I would say aim for N2, but also I've heard, I was like interacting with you guys on Twitter and then Instagram, I think. And then some of you guys are like, oh, I passed N1 and then things like that. So I thought that would aim high. Um, because I'm Japanese. I'm going to talk about how to study for N1 level and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and then subscribe to my video and then let me know in the comments that you want to hear N2 level and 3 level. Uh, I don't know which level you guys are at, so I'm any high, okay? So today I can't really show you the actual uh, questions and problems and whatnot on the test because I printed out these uh, test through the JL, official JLPT uh, website. Uh, however, there was a big warning that there, uh, there might be a copyright issues, blah, 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 blah. So I don't want to risk it. And so if you want to take a look at the actual test, uh, I'm going to put the link down below so you can go ahead and then go to the uh, JLPT's website and then you can like, you know, download, you can put a, you know, you can look through with your phones and whatever. Uh, so basically today what I wanted to talk about is that I want to go through the, the whole section of a JLPT N1 level test and I would like to give some insight as a Japanese person's point of view. So the first section of N1 level JLPT is reading kanji. And so there is basically a sentence and then there's a part of kanji that has underlined and then uh, there are four, this is four multiple choices. Uh, so there is no writing section, so it's all multiple choices. You don't really need to read the whole sentence, you can just look at the kanji and then you can read. You should be able to read. Part two is choosing kanji. So there is a sentence and then there is a brackets. And so you just need to uh, find a kanji that fill in uh, that section. You can probably guess which kanji you have to use uh, by looking at the, the, the before and then after the, the brackets. You don't have to read the whole sentence. And part three, meaning of the words and including kanji. Yeah, including kanji. So there is a, uh, a word in uh, the sentence that's underlined, and then you have to choose the, the most appropriate meaning for that word. Even for me, I was like, I think this is it, but like, oh, maybe this one is too. So even for a Japanese person, um, I was right, I was right, but it wasn't like, ah, this is so easy. It was more like, ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. You kind of have to learn not only those words, but also in the sentence. Part four is basically there is a, uh, 
you know, kanji or words, okay? And then there are four sentences using those words, and you have to choose the right way to use them. For this one, I think it's better for you to be able to come up with your original sentence if you see those words. So if you start reading all those sentences, it makes you feel like every sentence is right, right? And so before looking into any of those example sentences, you have to be able to come up with some linking words, okay? And so that's something you have to work on. And then once you have an idea how to use those words in your head, and then you're gonna look into those example sentences, like your choices. Part five, this is more like a nuance and the situations that they use in these questions vary. Sometimes it's like a very casual sentences and then sometimes like it's a business like and so you have to kind of start reading a lot of like novel or nonfiction or whatever but you need to read a lot of books. Like I know there is a logic behind it but and this is like this section is all grammar but I think it's easier because like I teach English to little kids as well but little kids don't understand grammar you know but my students can guess they can choose the right word and the reason behind it is because they just choose whether or not they have heard that word before in that sentence so like it's hard to tell the like, you know three year old four year old to teach the difference between you know does she and then do she you know does she play the piano and then do she play the piano it's very hard to tell the difference I mean I can explain it you know like you know there is a one person and then if it's not just like you you yourself or the person that you are talking to, and they have to use the a does, not do. But that's super difficult for a three-year-old to understand that. But three-year-old can choose do uh, does uh, in that sentence because they never heard do she. You know, they only heard does she in their life. So that's the most important thing. So you have to be, you have to expose yourself with the uh, right uh, Japanese from the beginning so that you have the idea which sound right and which doesn't sound right, if that makes sense. Part six is a little different from the past five sections. Uh, for this one, you have four words and you have to uh, answer the right order of those four words. So you have to make a sentence by unscrambling the words. Of course, there are there is a concept, and then they have you have the uh, some other words to complete the sentences. So it's not like you have to you only have four words. I would recommend to play with those four words. Uh, try many um, combinations, many different orders to find the order that makes the most sense. Because like. The first couple of questions were fine. It's, it was something that like, oh, there's no other way to express this uh, sentence, right? With these four words, like this is the only order that you can uh, write. But then towards the end, I had to try many times because like there's like there was like one word that I cannot use in that sense. Like there is no way that I can use this word in this sentence. Like, you know, three words would make the perfect sense. Like how, how am I going to put this last word, you know? And so then I, I decided to just like, you know, unscramble so many times and then I had to uh, put in in different orders and then I have to find the right fit. So... Um, it's kind of like a puzzle. Part seven, last section of grammar is a little bit of reading. Okay, so there's a passage and then uh, there are some blanks. And so basically you have to fill in those blanks with the right words. Um, so when it comes to something like this, I would recommend looking at the choices first. Okay, and so there are four choices for just one blank, right? And then those four choices are very, very similar. You can't just understand which word that can fit in the blank, but you kind of have to understand the, the phrasing 
as well, because basically those four choices are saying the same thing. If it's talking about apple, it's like apple something, apple that, apple this, apple blah blah blah. Okay, so you if if you know like oh it's talking about apple, but it's all have apple like the word apple in it. But I think it's better if you have the choices in your in your mind first before you start reading it. That's that's much easier. I feel like. Uh, because as you read, you kind of like, you can kind of think in the back of your head like uh, which one is the best option. Okay, so part eight, part eight through part nine, <laughs> part ten, part eleven, part twelve, part thirteen. So eight through thirteen will be reading probably right out of time. And so what I would recommend for this section, reading section is one, definitely, definitely look at the questions and possible answers first. And then you go back to the story or passage or paragraph or flyer that you have to look at. And you try to skim through it. I think most important thing to understand what's the flow of the, the story that you were reading and then what's the gist and then uh, what the author wants to tell through the story. And on top of that, if you can, when you find the one, one that looks like a flyer, you have to imagine like when you look at those similar um, type of flyers in real life, I don't think you will read from the top to bottom. Probably you have some question in your head, like when, where, what time, how much, you know, things like that. And then probably you would look for the information that would answer your questions, right? So think it that way. It looks like a lot of information, of course, because it's tests, right? But you don't have to look for the everything. And that's the reading section. And then now we're going to get into uh, listening sections. For the reading section, you have 110 minutes. So I don't think that's a lot uh you like as i said if you are trying to read thoroughly then you might run out of time okay so for listening say i actually got bored and i didn't do the whole listening section uh but i would say listening is a little more easier than the reading section i think except for the last section uh part five they have a example questions for each section. And so on that test day, just ignore it. Don't listen to it. Get yourself some time to skip ahead and read the first uh, section's possible answers. By looking at the possible answers for a listening test, you can kind of guess what the speaker will talk about. Like if it's talking about the inventory and cost and profit, and probably they're talking about selling something, right? And then it's if it's talking about the like airplane and ticket and cancellation, blah blah blah. And then it's talking it's talking about travel or maybe airport conversation, right? So build yourself um, some story. Maybe you're wrong, but you won't be far off. And so once in your head, you have some sort of like idea, it's much easier to understand what the speaker is talking about. For the first section, the most of the uh, question was like, what do the speaker do next? And part two, in English, what or how or who or why comes first, the very first of the sentence. So you have to listen to that in order to answer it right. But Japanese comes at the last. So you have to carefully listen to uh, the sentence, how it ends. So part three, there is no questions. There is no passage written on your test. So everything will be done by listening. Okay. It sounds hard, but they don't ask the specific question, specific name of the place or anything specific. So what you have to do is that you just, you know, sit back and relax and then you try to understand the big picture. As if you were listening, hearing the story by, uh, in English, you just like trying to um, imagine that you are watching the movie, 
You know, when you are understanding words or story in English, then you are not trying to translate word by word because there is nothing to translate it to. So what you're doing unconsciously is that you are just picturing the image, right? And that's how you understand what the other person is saying. So it's same as Japanese.、Um, you don't have to translate every single word, and that this is something that you can practice while watching、uh, watching YouTube or watching Netflix. And so when you are watching a uh, uh, listening, like if you watch something, then maybe you try to like you get visual information as well. So it's might it might not be good. But if you're listening something, listening Japanese story, and try to imagine the situation without translating into English. So listening part four.、Uh, this is something that you have to choose how you respond in a situation. So there is a speaker talking to you, and then you have to respond it right. And so, first of all, you have to understand what the other person is saying. But more likely, you have to understand what the person is implying, and then.、Uh, Think of why the person is speaking this way. Why the person is asking you this? You know, then you might be able to、uh, guess what you have to say as a response. Section number five. This is the only section that doesn't have the practice round. This might be a little bit advanced because you kind of have to remember the names、uh, of. People or places and things like that, just in case. What you have to know for this section is that how the story changes throughout the story. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's the whole thing, and I kind of skipped through. So if you have any questions,、uh, please let me know in the comments down below. And as I said, if you like this kind of like you know Japanese that that Japanese how to study type of video, give me a thumbs up and then subscribe to my channel and let me know what part of Japanese studies that you are struggling with. I might be able to help, and I hope it helps. And good luck with your exam, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.